Joining me right now, former economic advisor to President Obama, Austin Goolsbee, along with Allianz Chief Economic Advisor and President Obama's Global Development Council Chairman, Mohammed El Arian. Gentlemen, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you, Thank Maria. You. So, Mohammed, let me kick this off with you. To what do you attribute this week's performance? We see a real, uh, w would you call it a romance with, with markets as, as Trump was elected president? Why did stocks go to record highs? Why did interest rates uh, move as high as they did? The 10 year highest since April. Because traders and investors, Maria, have embraced the prospects of higher growth and high inflation under President elect Trump. And they've done that for two reasons content and tone. The content of his comments has been to emphasize the pro growth elements of his program high infrastructure spending, corporate tax reform, deregulation, and downplay the anti trade elements. And the tone, the tone has been incredibly constructive and unifying. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, when you look at the infrastructure plans coupled with the lower taxes and a rollback of regulation, he's promising to spur economic growth. Austin, what do you think about that? How much growth are you expecting as a result of these plans? Not a ton. I mean, I think we've had a significant uncertainty that was bearing down in the market trying to figure out this question that, that Mohammed raises. Is Donald Trump going to go for that nationalist kind of protectionist agenda or is he going to shift if he were elected to a more traditional Republican agenda of you know big tax cuts uh, re regulatory cuts thus far he seems to be going toward the more standard Republican route but I, we have yet to see this other shoe drop which is how are his supporters the non-establishment Republicans going to react to the last 72 hours in which you know, they're taking down a bunch of the big promises uh, on the campaign website. They named a bunch of lobbyists and the, the list of people they're talking about for jobs in Washington are the, are the same old uh, lifetime politician kind of names. I, I think we saw when George Bush enacted pretty close to the program that Trump is now describing, big tax cut, big rollback of regulations that had cr existed under President Clinton. We did not get a very big jump in growth. You got a little bit, but uh, you know we were c going into a recession right then. But so didn't that wasn't that I, coupled I wasn't that lot. coupled Austin with a whole host of new regulations, which did also hamper growth. Um, so in other words, what you're saying is you don't think lower Bush, taxes, no, no, you don't opposite. think lower taxes and and a rollback of regulations will lead to growth. I do not think that giant tax cuts for high-income people and corporations lead to rapid growth. It did, it, that did not happen when George Bush did it. And uh, factually, it's not true that George Bush increased a bunch of regulations. When he came in, he repealed a whole bunch of the things that Clinton had put in. I think the, the argument that unpaid for tax cuts that are going to grow the deficit will create magic beanstalk beans that grow the economy, I think has been disproven many times. I think they will pass a tax reform of that nature, but I don't think that that will have a big impact. So on what, do you, what no. do you think's been wrong with the last eight years then? How come we're still at just under 2% growth? The reason we've been about 2% growth, as we've talked about many times, is we had a large bubble that popped and the economy can't go back to doing what it was doing before the recession began. And so that involves transforming the main drivers of growth and that's a slow process and you know we what we need is to shift to more exports more capital investment more innovation led growth and you can't do that overnight Mohammed let me ask you about this move in interest rates do you think that has to do with the worry about inflation given that we are going to see more spending in terms of infrastructure uh, which Trump has spoken about or or do you think that we're seeing that have to do with the Federal Reserve I think we're seeing mainly because of the embracement, as I said, of higher growth and high inflation. We also are having a redefinition, if you like, of what the Fed is likely to do. And with the market so calm and with inflationary expectations going up, that means the Fed is more likely to hike in December than what people thought immediately after the election results. And finally, in the background, there's this concern, and it hasn't come out yet, and it's important that it stay in the background, there's this concern as to whether a Trump presidency will come after the political independence of the Federal Reserve. So the main drivers now are growth, inflation, to a lesser extent, the Fed.